morning everyone it's been a little while um i've been back at school which isn't that exciting so i thought i wanted to get back on so i thought i'm gonna do a bit of baking chat etc just printed out my recipe and firstly i'm going to make some national trust scones um, and then in a bit i'm going to stew some rhubarb so let's go i've preheated the oven i've got everything out washed my hands now i need to put my apron on i'm gonna try to do an apron transition are you ready very i'd be very surprised if that actually worked wiping the surface down with a soap cloth because i can't find the spray okay we're finally ready to start first i'm gonna put some self-raising flour in my bowl Ooh, that's a lot of self open water. I'm not doing very well because I've realised I've run out of margarine. So I'm just going to have to use spreadable butter. Oh, okay, luckily we still have plenty of butter because um, there weren't too much in this recipe. But now it's time for me to rub the butter into the flour. The thing about this process is that it just takes ages. See you when I've finally rubbed it in. <laughs> So that wasn't as bad as I thought it was going to be. Now we're going to stir in the rest of the ingredients. Concentration. interested in seeing me do a bake-off that would be so fun uh -oh. nice didn't film that process because that was horrifically messy however i just i use my fluted cutter to cut them out and well they need to be break well they need to be baked Let's clean up. Ignore the kettle, but I'm going to do a reset on my razor. I accidentally spilled them. Okay, they're still cooking, and I'm going to take you outside to pick some rhubarb. All right, here's our little rhubarb patch. So let's pick some. Cooper, stop eating stuff. Oh dear, I didn't pull that from the root. It ended up being successful in the end. I find cutting rhubarb really satisfying. My grandma is my baking inspiration because she's taught me how to bake and do rhubarb through all the years. I've been doing it since I was so little, so thank you, grandma. Here's some more. It doesn't look like I have too much, so I'm going to go see if I have some in the freezer outside from last year. I wasn't successful in finding the rhubarb, but maybe it's just because the freezer's full, so that I couldn't see it. We'll just have to work with what I have. I'm going to show you the steps. So obviously, I've washed my rhubarb, chopped it up into small pieces. I've got rid of each end, um, just because you might just want to. Um, and I've cut off anywhere where slugs have been. But obviously, it will boil off all the germs from the slug when I have cooked it so i do it depending on what um measurement you want to use i just do it in grams so i do a quarter of the weight that's how much sugar i need so first you're gonna weigh your rhubarb so my rhubarb's weight is actually 75 grams so i'm gonna divide that by four so that is 18.7 so i'm just gonna round that to 19 grams of sugar Then I'm just going to fill it with a tiny bit of water. I'd say like up to there, so not much. Now I'm going to mix. 
You don't need to give it a good mix, just a really quick stir. Put it in the microwave for, I'm going to say two minutes and then I'll check on it. Fun fact, my grandma and granddad actually have an allotment. Really enjoy going down on like water and everything and picking things and it's really fun. Cabbage. I'm a bit dizzy now. I've just got it out and I would say that's actually done because there wasn't much at all really. So I'm just going to mix it and wait for it to cool down. When it's cooled down, I'm going to put it in a container and I'd say it can last in the fridge up to a week. These are my finished scones. They look all right. Um, they didn't come out as uniform as I like. I hoped they would and expected them to, seeing as I used a uh, fleet of cutter, but they look all right. <laughs>